Now we will take a conformal tessellation import which has got a low max Q of less than 0.7 on the surface mesh and we'll grow a prism tet mesh from there. Along the way we'll find some issues and we'll see how the diagnostics panel can help us to find them before volume meshing and overcome them. For object based volume meshing we need a mesh type object and so we need to push the object through the workflow from geometry type object to wrap type object onto mesh type object. Now we add a material point for the fluid region of interest. We can select parts of the model, such as nodes or points, and the compute button within the create material point panel will find the centroid of those points and populate the x, y, z coordinates directly. The, pre the preview toggle allows us to preview where that material point lies in order to visually ascertain whether it is in the correct place. Before setting up prisms, we set our boundary condition types for our inlet, outlet and symmetry boundaries. This enables Fluent to pick all our walls when we orient the mesh by material point later, and we subsequently apply prism growth settings to those walls. Fluent Meshing has a number of prism meshing options available. For simplicity here we're using a simple aspect ratio based growth method with a base to height aspect ratio. We're also going to use a splitting approach so three layers will grow and subsequently be split into six layers. This is a faster method of growing very large numbers of layers. We now set up the tet mesher and we'll use the size function based approach which will respect our body of influence refinement regions. So we'll see the max element size being respected within the boxes that we specified earlier in the tutorials. Once we've chosen our prism settings and our tet mesh settings, we can click apply in the auto mesh panel and then save the mesh at that point. This saves all the settings that we're going to use and we can return to this point very easily later on. Prism layers fail here and the invalid layers are removed to leave none. Tet meshing proceeds anyway, which is the default behavior, but can be altered. Note that the meshing is sped up here to avoid waiting. The Control p hotkey is a position filter. We can select a position with the right mouse button and then use set ranges. We can untick the bounds in Z and X directions to allow a cut plane in the Y direction at this location very quickly. Once we've done that, we can view the volume mesh on that cut plane by the display grid panel. We aren't happy with the current grid as we wanted prisms in the mesh. We'll clear the volume mesh using Mesh Clear and then we'll use Diagnostics tools on the surface mesh to find out why the prisms failed. 
we could have picked up on these problems before we went to the volume mesh and fixed them. Prisms can fail based on non-manifold nodes and invalid normals. Diagnostics can show us where these places are in the geometry. We can then use boundary modifier tools with hotkeys to fix these areas. This could also be done in the CAD software. We will fix these problem areas using a selection of hotkeys to remove triangles and rebuild. If we select an edge, the F5 hotkey will create a patch based on selected edge loop. The default patch is not very good quality. If we want to switch on auto remeshing of patches, we can do that in the display controls panel. Here we make quite a wholesale change to this complex part of the geometry. We can use the polygon tool to select a number of faces and remove them. 
we can then rebuild and merge nodes in order to close the geometry up and make sure it's fully connected. We then have to take care of skewness at the end again to make sure that the skewness is below a certain level before proceeding to volume mesh. We recheck diagnostics to find any problems and fix quality issues resulting from some of the modifications we have made. We rewrite the mesh once the fixes have been finalised. Now we create the volume mesh again with fixes for the prism growth from the auto mesh panel. Again meshing is sped up for convenience here. Let's view the volume mesh again. <laughs> 